What's up? This is Demrick. Jamie Madrock. Man, this is your man's Obi Trice. This is Adlib. Yo, what up? This is Specs One. This is Fresh K. Hard Rock's the motherfucking Scrat MC. Breaking records. Breaking records radio out here. This is Breaking Records Radio. Check it out. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about the Dilla joint. Mm. How'd that come about? Um. I was kind of a late. A late comer to to like discover Slum Village. My boy Kirby Dominant in the Bay Area like had played me some of this stuff uh, around 2000 maybe or whatever. But it wasn't. Until, you know who really championed Slum Village for me? Mad Child. There was yeah. an era in uh, like 2001 where that's all Mad Child would play. Really. Just like man, just listen, like listen to the their cadences and stuff, and I did. I took his advice and I like really sunk a year into it, and I was like, oh man, and I'm listening to the beats. I'm like, who is this cat? This this kind of sound like my stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it was like there's a similarity, like just the way we work with samples and and the ear and still continue the ear for the jazz. Um, there's a bit of a similarity. Like Dilla was more advanced than I was. Like you know, understatement at that time, because I had just started really getting into making beats myself, but I don't know, I just felt like there was this musical cousin that I hadn't met out there, and I started looking for other things that Jay Dilla had produced, you know what I mean, like Q-Tip's Amplified album and a, and a bunch of stuff. Um, so one day in 2002, I, I, I told my manager, I was like, man, you know, really want to do something with with JD, like I'm not really interested in working with a whole bunch of other beat makers, but I want to mess with this cat. Like, you know, let's cop a bit, a bit of, give me a bit of a budget so I can make this happen. So I hollered at, at JD, and um, he was into it. So he sent me six CDs. He's mailed me six CDs with all these crazy beats, man. <laughs> The craziest stuff, you like stuff that's CDs? still coming out, like that other artists are using post homelessly. Yeah. Like, yeah, I still have those CDs. The weird thing about them is, like, I think only one of them might still be playable. They erode, they self destructed literally oh, shit. over time. These CDs <laughs> self destruct. I've never seen a compact disc destroy <laughs> itself. I'm serious, they're like burning holes and patches, like the weirdest <laughs> shit. Shit. <laughs> Like, That's like as if you had like a stash of like CDRs that were made to, to burn. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Dead serious. So yeah, he sent sent me all these CDs. <clears throat> pick a joint or pick you know whatever you know we can work out financially and shit. And it was a it was a hard time like trying to decide what to go with. But I went with this one and ended up writing to it. Call it one time. It's funny, I didn't even actually get the song out until like 2005, yeah. you know what I mean? But uh, from, from what I know, Dilla liked the song. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. It's like a full circle thing because like, now I ended up like developing a relationship with Dilla's younger brother, Dilla J. Mm -hmm. And we've just done a lot of work. He's been on a number of my albums and I jumped on like, I think I'm on five or six songs on his most recent album so you guys were on tour together uh, yeah like, yeah 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 like it's crazy man it's a small world it hurt your head thinking back <laughs> <laughs> no it doesn't it well kind of in a way so much history <laughs> yeah it's kind of, i wish i could do it all over again for sure you know what i mean like i just i hold so much faith that we're gonna see another era like that in hip-hop like the early 90s or the early 2000s where it seemed like a lot of people really cared the fans were there there's a lot of fans they're passionate about the music and the artists cared about putting out good product like mm -hmm. stuff that you can put your mind into or just grooves and you know basically uh like continuing the tradition of what people call real hip hop, you know what I mean? People call it that. that people call it that for a reason, because it, it follows like a certain guidelines that we set up ourselves. Like we used to police ourselves. Hip hop used to police itself. You couldn't be whack and rhyme. 
you know, they're gatekeepers. They're people that like, okay, you you could maybe get in. You're dope. You're dope. Fuck you. <laughs> You're not getting in. Like, <laughs> That doesn't really exist a screening anymore. Process. This is yeah, a screening pro process. Radio DJs, <clears throat> club DJs, like a club DJ wouldn't even let like a, a guy get on an open mic. If you're, if you're whack, here's the funny thing: if you were a terrible rhymer in the '90s, you actually risk getting beat down. <laughs> That's how it was. People were passionate about this you music. Need to bring that back. I see people rapping whack all night in places now, man. Nobody doing that. Cause don't know don't nobody have have a gauge of like what true quality is anymore. Nobody gives a shit. They're just like, oh, turn up, get lit. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are so PC nowadays. They fucking. Fear That's that. another thing. Everybody's scared to be labeled a hater. Yeah. Don't be so scared. Like you don't. You, this is a one shot deal, man. You you're gonna be dead before you know it. So. You have an opinion, you can give it. Yeah. yeah. Care about things. Yeah. Yeah. What else are you gonna do with an opinion? Exactly. Yeah. Man. I don't know, that's kind of a rant. I don't even know what that's going <laughs> <about> that. <laughs> Breaking fucking records radio.